was a lot of mystery there. Very little real information was passed on. For the most part, when sex was referred to, it was about moral choices. You know, we really can't do anything without Jesus knowing what we're doing. He sees and he knows even the intents of our hearts. When is it right or wrong to have sex? And there are good reasons to be very deliberate about making sexual choices. And that can happen outside of a religious context. These single girls and they got the roommates, that's not a family, that's not a dad, that's not a husband. These independent women, they get into trouble, especially younger. The unfortunate thing is, in many communities, there's not a dialogue about birth control or about um, sexuality at all. And so you have young people that are engaging in something they know very little about. She just doesn't want to be told what to do, or she just does. She just wants to go out and do her own thing and have a career. One of the ways the church encouraged abstinence was just simply keep young people very busy. So there were lots of ways to socialize without coupling and without leaving the group. So our youth group time, a lot of time was big groups doing activities together. Now, some people do this because they have this perverted desire to just share what goes on in their bedroom with other people. And it's perverted, it's wicked. Women need to be discreet, and you know what? That act between man and wife is supposed to be kept private. Enjoy it, love it, benefit from it as God ordained, but don't go talking about it with other people. We've put our hearts together. Now we are one. I'm not afraid. If there's a cloud above, if it should rain, so I spoke to the boys, and I talked to them about purity of life and keeping clean thoughts and so on. And this was back, they didn't have pornography then like now, so it's more relevant even now. And I was talking about this, and so in my message I said, and Jesus said, if you look with lust on a woman, you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. And I elaborated this, you know, to these boys. After the meeting, Eli Schwarzenegger came to me and said, was it fair for you to lay that scripture on those boys? Well, I said, that's what Jesus said. Oh, but he said he wasn't talking about boys having a sexual awakening and sexual urges and interest in persons. He's talking about adultery. And the only people who commit adultery are married people. He's talking about a person being untrue to their covenant. They're committed to a spouse, and now they're looking around at another, what it would be like to be with that person. And that's breaking covenant. Wow. So that was a special word to me on the matter of biblical interpretation and application. Because sometimes we take the Bible and we just handle it as though, well, there it is, that's the way it says it, and slap it at somebody. And he was saying, yes, but what is the real meaning here? And it would have fit the other night when I talked about hermeneutics. He was talking to these religious Pharisees who had a pattern in which if a man got tired of his wife, all he had to do was say in front of witnesses three times, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, and she's out and no recourse. This is adultery. This is being untrue to your covenant. And so here's my brother telling me that that's what this passage is. And I have often, often gone back to that as I've dealt with people who've been guilty of breaking covenant and what it is that they come to God and confess, that the real serious thing wasn't that sexual escapade out there. The real serious thing was they broke covenant with their spouse. Oh, yeah, you turn 18, you move out, you go to college, you get the job, you get the roommate. Okay, well, then just that's why 90-some percent of our young ladies now are going out and whoring around, ruining their lives, screwing up, and it's not till they get pregnant with a kid out of wedlock that they actually wake up and say like, oh, well, I want to raise my kid in church, so I guess I'll get right with God now. I'm in the mood for love, simply because you're near me. Funny 
but when you're near me, I need love. Feminism is also wicked because in the zeal to get women outside of the home and get them out working and making the same amount of money as men, they have to promote birth control to do that. The public discourse on sexuality between partially nude women selling beer to preachers and politicians thinking they have every right to legislate and be involved in things that are going on in private bedrooms. If we're talking about breaking the law, minors, unconsensual sex, well, when did we give our pastors and our politicians so much power over our lives with women's reproductive rights, with what's taking place within marriage and outside of marriage? These things need to be worked out among families and in the private lives of the citizens. This is of no business to these political figures. When my daughters turn 18, they're, they're gonna obey me. And they're gonna live in my home until I give them away in marriage. Unless they, you know, if they choose to go out and go to the devil or rebel. But you know, that's not the way they're being taught and that's not being condoned. It's not gonna happen. But today, that's just considered the norm. And the sad part is we hear this far too often. A pastor who is so outspoken against same-sex relationships and he's exposed later to have multiple partners and to be completely a hypocrite and a fraud but he was so concerned with the sexual practices of other people it's a it's a power game i don't even think they care that much why are you sending your daughter to go get a job when she's 16 years old Right? She's this young, impressionable, 16-year-old, weaker vessel, and you're going to send her to go hang around with a bunch of worldly, sinful people so she can fall in love with some non-Christian, derelict guy right. at the fast food place. Is that really worth that minimum wage, part-time paycheck she's bringing home? And let me tell you, as for me and my house, my daughters will never have a job outside the home while they live in my house. I will provide for them. They will work in the home doing housekeeping. They will not ever be sent outside. The, well, what about their, look, just give them some spending money if they need spending money so much. Just buy them what they need. But don't just send them off to the wolves at age 16. And then they get their own money and then their own paycheck and then they start feeling independent. And then guess what? When they're 18, they go out and they go to the devil. First Timothy 5 talks about single women turning aside after Satan, and that's why they need to marry, bear children, and guide the house. They don't turn aside after Satan. And listen, they need to go from dad to husband. That's God's will. In the early Puritan colonies, the stigma of a bastard child resulted in infanticide. He who begun a good work in me and in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. The idea that if we could return America, return our country into a more of a theocracy where the biblical standard was held in high regard, that life would, be, would become easier for people and that um, people would make better choices um, or that people would all agree with biblical standards doesn't seem to bear out. We gave assistance at the Crisis Pregnancy Center, discovering that it's not enough to say, I'm against abortion, and we've only touched the tip of what we ought to be doing. You know what you'll find lacking is, you'll find a ton of young single guys, and you'll find less young single ladies. I'm talking 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I mean, they're just, it's like, where are they? That demographic is, is like a, a missing demographic. And I'll tell you why, because we live in a society where the, when they turn 18, they're free to do whatever they want and they choose the wrong thing 99% of the time, 99% of the time. And if you were to show me the, the young ladies that are in church at that age, young single ladies, 
18, 19, 20, 21, it's, I guarantee you it's the ones who have a strong father figure that they look to. And that's what's keeping them right.